we're going to cover the bench mark lifts that you need to throw 150 feet if you're a high school male in the discus and we're going to start right now What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in being more explosive, you're interested in improving your throws technique, you're interested in improving your throws based training, make sure that you like, subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you toss some bombs. So we get asked all the time at Throws University, hey, what do I need to bench press to throw this far? What do I need to back squat to throw this far. And we need to take that step back, right? We need to take a step back and first just analyze. If we're talking about the discus specifically, we need to know what is actually needed to throw the discus far. We know we have to be very mobile in our upper back. We want to catch that discus nice and deep so that when we get that non-dominant leg grounded at the front of the circle, we have a long, big pull. We feel nice tension across our abs. We have that mobility in our upper back to lead to a stronger finish. We know that we have to be strong. We have to have absolute strength so that we can handle a ton of force when we're at the front of the circle. We also know that we're in unilateral positions when we're grounding in the middle of the circle. So we need to have some serious unilateral strength. We also know that we need to have a rapid rate of coordination. So that's going to entail some other different factors. So all of these factors play into the development of becoming an elite level discus thrower. But as we work up the ranks, maybe you're in 9th grade, you're in 10th grade, you're a younger high school discus thrower and you want to know what it takes just to qualify for states or to make that state final. Now we know what those elements are, but what does that mean for actual weight room data? How can we get to that next level? Now we're going to dive deep into those numbers so that you have a nice blueprint of where you need to go to become a 150 foot discus thrower. So starting off, we're talking about the snatch, okay? So we know that our upper back is going to have to be more mobile if we're doing snatch work. If our upper back is more mobile, we're gonna catch that discus nice and deep. If our hips are mobile, we're also going to have a better stretch from our left hip to our right hand. We're gonna have more mobile hips that leads to greater trunk tension. That trunk tension leads to a better reaction. We're gonna have a stretch shortening cycle all the way across our abs. And that's where the snatch comes into play. So when we're talking about throwing the discus really, really far, we've got to know that you've got to incorporate the Olympic lifts in your training. You've got to utilize the snatch. That doesn't mean that you need to start off and just start hammering as heavy weights as possible. It means there's a technical aspect. And when you can switch your mind from being that meathead high school kid to being a little bit more technically minded and you can and you can build and improve your technique. Now, when you build and improve your technique in the snatch, that's going to lead to discus technical improvements as well. But so what is that number? If you want to throw 150 feet in the discus in high school, you should be able to snatch 175 pounds. So if you can snatch 175 pounds or about 80 kilos, you have the strength and the ability to coordinate rapidly enough that you can ultimately hit that 150 foot discus throw and that's gonna get you to place in the top eight at your discus state championships. That next key lift is gonna be the clean and we know when you're grounding in the middle, when that right side hits, you've got a lot of force that you also have to absorb in your strong leg. You've gotta absorb that force in your trunk. You've gotta be able to control that force absorption and reuse that energy effectively on the finish. And that's where the clean comes into play. When you're catching that clean, you learn how to absorb force very effectively, but you also learn how to develop it off the floor. Maybe you're even catching that clean in the hole and you're coming out of the hole really, really rapidly. That's gonna help improve your hip mobility, your lower back mobility. That's gonna lead to better throws ultimately long term. And so if you wanna throw 150 feet in the discus in high school, you've gotta clean at least 235 pounds. So 235 pounds or about 107 kilos. Those are the numbers that you need to put out and to strive towards if you wanna make that state championship final. 
Now let's get into some upper body work. We've got the bench press. A lot of coaches will say, oh, bench press is so overrated. But I've got a little story for you. When I trained under the world-class Olympic champion, Dr. Anatoly Bunderchuk, he followed a ton of 60 meter discus throwers. And these discus throwers, as they increased their bench press over 180 kilos, the more they got to 180 and then over 180 kilos, the likelihood of them throwing 60 meters or about 196 feet, the likelihood increased. There was actually a better transfer from the bench press to the discus based off of his research than there was from the bench press to the shot put. Okay, so the bench press correlates really, really well to the discus. We've got to think about even if you have a little bit more of a closer grip, now all of a sudden our humerus is getting nice and deep and when our humerus is nice and deep, we're going to have a really big stretch on our pec. Now if we can think about that inside the circle, now we take that humerus and we just extend our arm. That's where the discus needs to be when we're grounding at the front of the circle. So we need to have the ability to handle that big stretch across our pecs. Now with the bench press, if you want to throw 150 feet, you've got to bench press 275 pounds. That's a pretty reasonable bench press. It's nothing crazy, but it's very, very reasonable. It's also still a pretty solid bench. It's about 125 kilos. If your bench isn't there yet, I recommend five sets of 10 to 15 push-ups every single night till, until you're hitting that 275 pound level. And when you hit that 275 pounds, now all of a sudden your likelihood of throwing 150 feet is gonna be that much higher. Now that takes us into our back squat. So we know that if you're gonna be squatting with a high bar back squat, okay, that's the other key factor is here. We have to establish, sadly, what a back squat is. We want a high bar position. We want our trunk to be more upright. We wanna have full range of motion. We want our glutes and our hamstrings draped over our gastroc, okay? We want that hip mobility. We want that lower back mobility. We want that posture. Okay, think about the posture of the back squat. Now think about grounding in the middle with that right leg in the middle and being a little bit more upright. Now we can have that left side rotate around the, the right side. That's where the back squat comes into play. Okay, so on top of that, the back squat also helps us hold that finish position at the front. It helps us rotate into our transfer leg. So when we're hitting better positions at the front and we have more absolute strength, we can hold higher levels of energy. Another key factor with the back squat, the snatch, the clean, they will dramatically improve because of our strength in the back squat. So if we improve the back squat, we will see an improvement in the snatch and the clean. And when we see an improvement in the snatch and the clean, we're also going to start to see a really big improvement in our throws. So the back squat is almost covering three different movements. And that's a really, really important factor. Now, what number do we need to hit? If we're hitting 300 plus pounds, or about 137 kilos, if we're hitting those weights in the back squat, we should be capable of throwing 150 feet. That's gonna get us to that state final. That's potentially gonna get us our first state medal, and we're gonna feel a lot better about that work that we put in in the off season. Now, before we get into that front squat number, a lot of these numbers are hard to follow. And also, what if you wanna throw 130 feet? Maybe you wanna throw 175 feet or 190 feet. Maybe you wanna throw 65 feet in the shot put. Where can you find all of this information? If you click on the link down below, you can head over to throwsuniversity.com. You can pick up our ultimate throwers assessment. And we have all of these benchmark numbers laid out so that you know exactly what you need to do in the off season to work towards so that you know where you're at in the weight room in relative comparison to where you're at in the circle. You can see where your weaknesses are, you can formulate a nice program, and you can strive to lengthen that PR over and over again. Now that leads us into our final exercise, the front squat. And so a lot of high school kids like to avoid the front squat. They don't like the feeling on their wrists or their elbows, or maybe their lats are really tight, their triceps are really tight. But do this for me. Roll out your lats, roll out your triceps, do some mobility work throughout your wrists. And if you still can't front squat, front squat like a bodybuilder. 
I might make fun of you a little bit, but not a ton, okay? Front squat like a bodybuilder. Make sure you're getting that full range of motion. And the reason why I recommend this is the carryover of that core stability is off the charts. The front squat is one of the best ab exercises that you could ever do. Now, think about this with a clean. If we front squat more, our clean is gonna go up. It's the, almost the exact same movement, right? If we front squat more, the back squat's gonna go up. So now we start to see how all of these weights and all of these different exercises are interchangeable. They can feed off of each other. They work synergistically. And so if you can front squat 275 pounds, you're gonna be able to smash 150 feet. You smash 150 feet, you're meddling at your state final. Now all of a sudden you're meddling at that state final and you're starting to get interest from coaches. You're getting interest from college level coaches. They wanna see if you can throw 170 feet. They wanna see if you can throw 180 feet. And now all you've gotta do is get back to that board and sit there, lay out those goals, lay out that program and start working your butt off that off season. If you want help with your strength training program and you want even more information about these benchmark lifts, head over to throwsuniversity.com. You can pick up a strength training based program or your copy of the Ultimate Thrower's Assessment. That's gonna help you become a better thrower long term. If you want more videos about discus based training and weight room based training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time guys, peace.